And good morning. You are watching Do I Need a Lawyer? I'm Gary Martin Hayes. Thank you for being with us. And instead of taking a question in this segment, I want to just talk about an area of law that my law firm handles. And these cases involve inadequate security in a commercial establishment, such as an apartment complex, malls, or, or other businesses. Georgia law requires owners of property and businesses to protect their customers and tenants from unreasonable dangers. These individuals and companies are required to take minimum steps to learn of dangerous conditions and to correct these dangers so their customers or the tenants that lease their apartments are not hurt. But when these businesses do not take reasonable steps to correct the unsafe condition or if someone is seriously injured or killed, there is a potential claim for inadequate security. And let me stress one important point uh, right here, right now. Just because someone is injured on someone's property does not mean the property owner or business is at fault. We have to prove two things. One, the business owner had prior knowledge of the hazard or danger or with the exercise of reasonable care should have discovered it. And two, the business owner did not take reasonable steps to correct the hazard or prevent the injury from occurring. Today, I want to focus on inadequate security cases involving apartment complexes. And the two most common types of attacks that we see that involve apartment complexes are sadly sexual assaults and shootings. And it seems that every time you turn on the news, you hear about someone being shot or, or sexually assaulted in their apartment parking lot or inside their apartment. And these reports are very disturbing. What's worse, though, is knowing that if the apartment complex had exercised reasonable care, a lot of these crimes could have been prevented. When these attacks occur, we typically find one of two things have happened. One, the attacker is a resident at the apartment complex or a guest of a resident. Or two, the attacker came onto the apartment complex grounds as a trespasser. Now, I'd like to address both of these in more detail. If the attacker actually lived at the apartment complex, it's a challenge for us to show that increased security measures would have kept the attack from happening. This requires a lot of investigative work on our part. Could the apartment complex have screened the tenant better by doing a criminal background check on him? If he came up with a criminal history, could they have rejected him as a tenant? And what other factors may have helped the attacker that could have been prevented? Were there burned out broken lights in the parking lot or in the breezeway that were not replaced or repaired that provided kind of a cover of darkness for the attacker? How long were these lights out? And was the apartment complex on notice? Is the parking lot fenced or is the fence broken or, or cut in areas that allow both the entry and an escape route for the criminal attackers? And let's look inside the tenant's apartment. Are the locks on the doors and the windows inadequate or broken, allowing easy access for the criminal attackers? Now let's look at when the attacker is a trespasser on the apartment property. Our investigation focuses on two things in these type of attacks. One, we need to discover if other attacks, other shootings, sexual assaults, other violent crimes have occurred on the property before the attack that we are investigating. And two, we must find evidence to show the apartment complex did not implement the reasonable, necessary safety measures to protect its tenants after these crimes and attacks started to happen. And the courts have told us that prior property crimes may give a landlord notice of possible future crimes against a person. Again, that was a Walker versus Adderhold Properties case. Now, here are five things we try to prove that uh, the defendant business owner was negligent in not protecting the people on his property. One, prior crimes. We start by securing the criminal reports from the local police department through an open records request. If the, there were prior violent crimes at the apartment complex, like, like previous robberies, shootings, or sexual assaults, then the apartment complex is on notice of a serious, serious security problem on their premises. The complex has an obligation to protect the people that pay money to live there and to take action to remedy or reduce the danger to its tenants. Two, the defendant business owner's internal reports. We also look to see if the apartment complex had any reports which identified prior crimes. Three, what security practices are in place? Another thing we investigate is, has the apartment complex done anything to help protect the people that are invited onto its property? Four, prior victims. We may also interview prior victims of similar crimes at the apartment complex or in the area. And these are especially helpful if the crime occurred at the same location. Again, showing the landlord new of the prior incident. And five, security experts. There are times where we may hire security experts to help us establish that the apartment complex breached the standard of care. 
by not having security when needed or by having an inadequate amount of security. And as you can see, the handling of these premises liability inadequate security cases, they can be very challenging. You need an attorney that is, that is very experienced in these types of cases. This is not an area where you want to try to go it alone. You do not want to take on the apartment complex or the business owner and their lawyers by yourself. You need an attorney that is experienced that can go to fight for you. If you'd like to discuss your claim with me, it's real easy. Just pick up the phone right now, 770-934-8000, or you can email me, gary at garymartinhayes.com. And to find out more about these claims, go to garymartinhayes.com. And more of Do I Need a Lawyer? We'll be back in just a moment.